Hey everyone, I'm not in London. I'm in South Beach. And actually I've just come through Brooklyn. We spent a couple of days back in Brooklyn uh, here for the, our refining conference, which is unusual, but uh, the reason being essentially we're piggy piggybacking the major Goldman Sachs Energy Conference that uh, is annually down here uh, at the beginning of the year. Now, historically, we always did, we have always done a, a refining conference on the first working, effectively the first working day of the year. It gets a bit tricky with the calendar, but basically uh, back in 2010, uh, I wanted to do a refining conference at a time when the independent refiners in the US were pretty much hated. No one had any interest in them. And because we were worried about attendance of clients, we held it in Boston. It was first day of the year, working day of the year, uh, in winter obviously and the refiners were sufficiently unpopular that they would all fly up for that conference uh, I remember the first conference we did one investor said all I know is that this group is so hated and everyone's so bearish it must be bullish for them and he was dead right why was he dead right well essentially what would happen over the past decade is that the growth in US oil and gas production would be extremely bullish for, for independent refiners because you would get a major discount in uh, US crude availability and also US natural gas. Back then there was a ban on US crude exports so you had enormous discounts of US crudes to international whereas global products, gasoline, distillate etc all trade at global prices so the discounts of, as you still see today of US crudes and US natural gas particularly are very bullish for the refining and it would be a tremendous uh, boon for the refiners to say the least over the past decade. Now, we, we can't entirely give credit to the market for their performance because at the same time, you also had much better management. The group consolidated. When we first did the conference, you had 13 independent refiners quoted in the US. Now, it's more like seven or eight. And um, you got much better management with much better strategies and particularly led by Joe Gorder at Valero. The realization before the EMPs realized that essentially free cash flow generation and cash return to shareholders would be the key became very very bullish for the sector in fact so bullish that over time the US refiners became much more reluctant to fly to Boston probably quite understandably uh, in midwinter and over time we changed the, ref the conference to be virtual as of 2018 in fact one of the first virtual oil and gas conferences was done by us in 2018 pre-COVID uh, now, because of the Goldman Conference and for fun and because we're independent, I decided that we would do a virtual hybrid conference. So essentially in person here in Miami Beach tomorrow, we'll have six or seven refiners, CEOs talking uh, before the Goldman Conference starts in earnest on Thursday. So that's why I'm here and I'm looking forward to the conference. It, it does give you a good call on oil to start the year because one of the interesting things about covering refining all these years is that it gave us a great call and understanding of what was the impact of US oil production growth would be. At the time, people didn't really get the whole it's all light crude thing. They didn't understand that at the time there was a crude export ban. They didn't know that US natural gas would go to such a big discount to global natural gas, all as a result of the success of the EMP industry. But actually the benefits would accrue as much as anything to refiners and that was you know an enormously bullish relative to where they were uh, past decade as i say it helped that you had much better management much better strategy and consolidation which is kind of what you're getting amongst the emps and the big oils now the outlook for the year i'm sure they'll all say demand is good because having flown in here to miami beach i can tell you the place is jammed the planes jammed we all know this stuff you know it's just there's a lot of human activity basically going on and it remains as people are beginning to realize highly oil and gas intensive you can add as much solar as you want you can add as much wind as you want but the fact of the matter is if you want to fly around which people do you're going to have to do it in an oil fired plane and the list goes on in fact we quoted yesterday in our sunday note Michael O'Reilly, the CEO of Ryanair, the budget European airline, saying that while well, jet fuel is 2% of global emissions, shipping is 5%. Now, while all this is highly economically levered and we have to decide how the economy is going to do this year, over time, what you've also done is you've shut down quite a few US refineries and you've structurally tightened the market for refining. So the sector has become much better loved and it's much tougher to get them to appear at our conference, which is why we have to hybrid it with uh, a combination of uh, virtual and in person. But of course, I'm being sneaky and I've got refining managements that would be here anyway for the Goldman Conference next door. And um, 
as a result, we would uh, be able to uh, grab some additional clients. And I'm off to dinner now with, with a group of clients uh, to, uh, to start the whole process. Okay, let's just quickly sum up the year. So basically last year, as you know, we ended 2022 as the best performing sector, oil and gas by a mile. The market was terrible. Everybody came into 2023 bullish oil, essentially. I was certainly bullish and wrong. But, you know, that was the sort of the setup with Russian sanctions starting and another, other factors essentially on the, the idea that China demand would be strong, global demand would be strong, but supply would not be so strong, led by Russian declines, which frankly we never got. We also got enormous growth in U.S. production, which certainly the acceleration in Q4 became very negative for the sector. So essentially what happened is, against all expectations, it was particularly with the 5% US GDP growth print that nobody predicted, I don't think. Um, according to my observation of markets, nobody predicted US GDP would grow 5% in Q3. You ended up with a very strong year for the market and a terrible year for the oils. Of course now, needless to say, everyone's bullish the market and bearish the oils. And my argument yesterday on my note was essentially, you know, I've seen this movie before. I'm sure that we can surprise to the upside here, even though we have the weakest earnings uh, growth outlook as of the current numbers for whatever reason. And you never know with oils, uh, we could easily surprise to the upside, especially off the low multiples, because the issue for the Magnificent Seven is that over the course of uh, 2023, their multiple expanded by 40%. So it wasn't earnings growth, it was multiple expansion, which of course is very bullish, but ultimately can you seriously replicate another 40% increase in multiples? I really wish that plane wasn't flying over. I know people will kill me for not using a microphone yet. Anyway, it's gonna go past. Hey, another, it's all jet fuel demand, man. So the fact of the matter is that the setup, if you think back to the start of 2023 is the opposite. People are uh, loving oil at the start of 2023, now hate it. People were loving the market, hating the market back then, now love it. You know, the list goes on. And I think there's a pretty good argument here that on mean reversion, the oils can have a very good year. The refiners generally are excellent companies. And so I'm fairly confident that they'll continue to deliver extremely good cash return. A couple of the names like PBF with a very strong balance sheet as a result of the 2022 uh, Russia-Ukraine craziness and refining margins basically can do nothing like Marathon Petroleum but return cash to shareholders and that becomes very bullish because that's essentially our argument for being bullish oil that your cash returns are going to be so high much as the market hates them they're cheap and your cash returns are going to be so high that if you own one any oil almost long term essentially within you know eight years ten years your basis will be entirely returned to you by the management's and as a result, you'll essentially have an option on the oil age lasting longer than eight years. People haven't yet recognized that in the stock valuations, but I think over time they will. So we actually start the year quite bullish the sector, even though we don't love the oil price for pretty obvious reasons like anyone else, we will see slower demand. The question will be, will we see much weaker supply? Supply last year was the problem. Russia was the single biggest negative in terms of surprising to the upside. Will we see that temper or at least not grow as much against expectations in 2024? That certainly seems to be a good bet. I hope that makes some sense. It's good to be back. Stay tuned. Subscribe to Sankey Research if you really want to read everything that we're saying. Cheers.